At London Financial Studies, we focus exclusively on capital markets. Our programmes offer practical learning to professionals from all over the world. Today, I'm going to be looking at some of the latest issues in the fundamental review of the trading book. In particular, I want to have a look at some of the latest proposals which address industry concerns around non multiple risk. In addition, very little detail was given on how this non multiple risk should actually be capitalised. Two new proposals have recently been put forward to try and resolve some of these outstanding issues. The first was from the Basel Committee on Banking Supervision. So the first thing to say is that the fundamental view of the trading book changes the way in which regulatory as capital is calculated using an internal model from a definition of VAR, which was much discredited during the 2008 financial crisis, to one of an expected shortfall. So the difference between these two concepts is shown on this. So key thing about the fundamental review of the trading book is it doesn't specify which method has to be used for expected shortfall calculations. In fact, it gives market practitioners a very wide choice. You can either use historical simulation, which is what most people do. They take a past history of the underlying risk factors and try and simulate from past history, believing that past history will forecast risk in the future. But it doesn't stop people from using Monte Carlo methods. One of the things that I want to try and stress is this idea of non modelable risk influences how you might think about designing an internal model at a financial institution. Just engage in a little thought experiment. Consider two sorts of internal model. One, where you store every single piece of data that you ever use. Every equity price is a risk factor to try and balance the capital hits from these two penalties. So the proposed update for, on non modelable risk factors from the Basel Committee. One of the key points was that every single point on a yield curve or every single point on a volatility surface could be a risk factor. So what happens to non modelable risk? How is it capitalised? Well, the initial standards document has the sentence in it they will be capitalised using a stress scenario that's calibrated to be at least as prudent as the expected short. The one thing that the Basel Committee has not specified yet is how to construct those stress scenarios. And there is a document out from the EBA, the European Banking Authority, a discussion document dated December the 2017, which tries to put some formulation formalization around how to build these stress scenarios. OK, so calculating the standard deviation of a risk factor. How's that going to work? So it looks fairly complicated, and we've got some formulas up here about how the European Banking Authority suggests that you're going to do this. Unfortunately, there is one thing that is still missing, and that's an adjustment for the nonlinearity of the expectation. So this extreme stress, the loss of the worst case risk factor, well, what is this thing? And technically, this is really an approximation for the loss. What do you do about non modelable risk factors which are outside the scope of this? Perhaps you don't have any observations over the next last year, or only a couple. The original proposal says you take the worst case loss. I'm not quite sure what that would mean for a short equity position where, theoretically, the loss is infinite. The changes to non modelable risk are just part of a more widespread change and review that covers items like P&L attribution testing, residual risk add-ons, the definition of the trading book, the boundary between the trading book and the banking book, treatment of mutual funds, and the level of risk weights. All of these recent changes are covered in the London Financial Studies two-day course on the Fundamental Review of the Trading Book. <laughs>